Good day. Welcome back to Flight Dreams. Today we've got a hundred dollar hamburger flight on our hands going from Daytona Beach up to St. Augustine. Uh, now that hundred dollar hamburger uh, is a little outdated. That was decades ago the term was coined to really refer to a short flight that would cost about a hundred dollars to get a hamburger that was only going to cost a, a buck or two. Uh, so we should probably up that $100 today, but it seems to have stuck. So here we are in Daytona Beach. Uh, right behind us here, uh, that building is the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical School, a very famous aeronautical school. And if we pull back a little bit here, see there's all their planes. <clears throat> the terminal is here. What really is great about this airport is it's right beside, adjacent to, the Daytona International Speedway. Here's part of it. Here, you can see stands over here. So we'll be going over that today. So let's have a look and see where we're actually going to be flying on our uh, aeronautical map brought to you by Sky Vector. Here we are here in Daytona Beach. I'll explain this in a second. Going to head up to uh, Ormond Beach to the VOR and just make a slight right to this intersection here, which is actually the start of the intersection. Uh, sorry, it's the start of the ILS. And then go straight into St. Augustine. When we get to St. Augustine, we'll close the flight down. But we're going to go in and have uh, a hamburger. So later on, we'll fly back. We'll fly the route back. So. Why is there a red circle around here today? And it's a uh, caution area. And that's because of the Daytona 500. You can see this uh, diamond here. It's actually got the speedway, but you can see it has here. It's a NASCAR Daytona 500. Race starts at 1930 Zulu. Uh, when the, the dates, when it times it's effective, surface to 3,000 feet above ground level. We'll be live in 34 minutes, so we're going to be able to get out of here and get up to St. Augustine, no problem. So, let's see what we've got going here, and let's get everything going. Nav charts. There we are there. So let's hop in the plane and start to get her set up. I want to use the uh, standby battery. That's fine. Arm it, get rid of that yoke, and we'll come over here. We're going to get the uh, beacon on. We'll crack the throttle just a bit and get the mags going so we actually get this plane started. Uh, you got to get the battery, or it's not going anywhere. There we go. Get the RPMs to about a thousand here. Looking good. Let's turn on the. And I did check, sorry, that the brakes were set. So we weren't going anywhere. Yes, yeah, get the GPS going. So we're fine. Still aligning. There we go. So I got to get the flight plan in here. Let's do that. I play. You know what? I I prefer going off the uh, other flight plan side for the moment. Anyway, do we have it over here? No. There we go. So the origin here is K D A B. We go Daytona Beach. Enter to accept it. Enter to accept that. Let's get down here on route. OMN will be our VOR for Orm Ormond Beach. Oh, yeah. Went too far.
here we go now enter here for dupes for duplicates so enter we don't want the airport we want the VOR in southeast US and we enter that there we go and we do have is it in the flight plan here there we go C O B O K which is where we have to go to and I'll show you that off of the actual charts C O B O K so let's get that going and I can actually do it this way initiating the keyboard C O B O K makes it a little faster so these states it's good and then we come down here to our destination and St. Augustine K S G J and it's Northeast Regional Florida Regional St. Augustine perfect there we go enter flight plan is in there so let's have a look at our charts here we don't have uh... so we're taking off not sure which way we're taking off yet I'm pretty sure it'd be to the east on seven left and then um, we will fly north and there's Kobach and then turn left into the airport bit of an offset uh, ILS today you can see that there 1.22 degrees so a little bit of hand flying towards the end which I like to do anyway I think we're going to be about 2,000 feet today. So let's get some uh, some weather here. 132.875. So 132.875. And we will get, hopefully, you're going to come up. Hey, this. Okay, let's just check here. It winds 117 at 19, clouds are 5100, so I think we will go up to 2000 feet only. Let's set this to be. Well, actually, let's look up here and see what, uh, what we are here. 3000 feet, so let's go up to 3000 feet and let's see a pattern to get into St. Augustine's. So let's go up to 3000 feet. And you can see here it's been adjusted to 3,000 feet. 3033 is the altimeter standard there. So very high pressure today in Daytona. There we go. Okay, so that's all set in. Let me pull back here then. Let me pull up the, there we go, the air traffic control. I want to depart to the north. Let's get our taxi. Acknowledge that. Okay, we're going to click Tower 118.1 when we get down there. So let's put that in now. 118.1. There we go. 
and I'm going to do flight level change of 74 feet per minute, which is, see just below where I'm working here, VY. Right there, VY. That's the rate of climb we want when we leave here. Uh, 70 degrees is 7 left, so I want to get the heading at 70 degrees. So if we have to switch on autopilot early, we will. We're all set there. CDI, we're on the pink, which means we are actually on uh, the flight plan that we put in earlier. So you can see here, Daytona Beach to Ormond. It's only 7.7 .7 miles, and we have to go 343 degrees to get there. And there it is there. So we're looking pretty good. It's just... Uh, Get out of here for a sec. <clears throat> now sometimes, and you, you've seen it if you've watched my channel before, the rooting on the, the ground is not always the best that they take you this way. So I'm actually going to go out, follow this this way, backtrack here, and then go down November. So let's get uh, some more instruments going. We need the nav light, taxi light. It looks like we're ready to go. Go grab our hundred dollar hamburger. So what I do want to do is I want to turn on the co-pilot. So she's doing all the radio communications now. He's me to fly. And I want to set the timer so we know how long this flight is. Start. There we go. Counting up. Timer. Parking brake off. Taxi light on. Nav on. Beacon on. Pedo we don't need. It's 23 degrees today. It's very warm. So. Left. Clear left. Clear right. One thing I didn't do was yell clear prop when we start it. That wasn't good of me. No flaps required for takeoff today. See our magenta line here is the line we will actually be flying. Nobody coming. Now you can see that taxi line has now come down here. A few clouds out today. Adis weather had informed us there's the wind sock, wind coming from the east. I do like to have this on when I'm not flying on VATSIT, this being the check um, line here. Because not all airports have the same. Uh, nomenclature for the taxiways. You've watched the channel, you've known that uh, as they do in real life. So the charts I'm looking at are real life charts, but uh, the game may not have it correctly. Just see a plane right here. So this is November. Check left, right. We're okay. Because of the way we're taking off today, we're not going to really get a look into the uh, speedway. Left and right, there we go. Making sure that we don't run into the call here. No planes, we're clear. No plane at the hangar. Hangar. <laughs> Sorry, at the terminal. There's another plane up here. And they can be anything from general aviation, like the Cessna 172 we're flying today. 
up to the big jets. So you can see here we're on taxiway in November, passing November 7 on our left. And this part is actually fine down here. So here we are passing November 7. Speedway. All these $100 hamburger runs are fairly short. Usually maybe 110 nautical miles and less. Really meant to be just <clears throat> fly up. Grab a bite to eat, fly back, maybe some sightseeing in the city or town where we're going, which is what we'll do today, and then come back. Now it is dubbed a hamburger run. Sometimes you're there for breakfast, sometimes for dinner. Just depends on the time of day. There's another plane here. That plane is low. I wonder if it's coming in too. Daytona. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't see it here. A little too early to switch over to tower. Well, let me just see if we... No. Nothing. Maybe going. It doesn't look like there's a not an airport out here, so we'll see. Let's see here. And the airports are way out there, but tough to tell whether it's plane on the uh, horizon or actually low because it's coming in here. Let's go over to tower so we can keep on listening there. We're getting close to being able to do our run up. Let's see where we are. Yeah, let's do our run up. Let's do our run up here. Just to make sure everything's working well before we actually do head out. So we're going to stop here. Parking brake set. Let's Go up here to 1800 RPM. Not a little too high, pull it back. Doesn't have to be bang on 1800. And Magneto left. Drops fine. Back to right, comes up fine, dropped a little bit where, where I want to be. Here, 1800, drop left, that's fine. Back to 1800, there we go, good to go. So, we can get closer. Ask for permission to, to go. Looks like that, there it is there. That plane is coming in here, so we'll probably get to have to hold. Have it on 18 one, we do have it on tower. see who it is. Let's just go up to the hold line here. That's for permission to... Oh, we went a little bit too far. Who is this? Delta Airlines.
Now it's interesting. The game often will make you wait here. In real life, we'd probably be able to go on the runway and uh, hold. Line up and hold would be the instruction we would get. Certainly when I'm on vats and we get that often. So hopefully that won't take too long for this plane. For this plane to uh, exit the runway. And we'll be able to go. We only need to change this view. I don't like it uh, too much. You see over the nose here, but don't have a good wing view under the wing, so I think I'll keep it here for now. There he is, turning. He's turning now. We'll get our clearance once he gets over to ground. Coming in from the right or the left. Let's try to get a better view here before we take off. <laughs> Deal with this one. Hmm. Huh. There we go. We'll go with that one. Okay, off we go. We're ready. Slowly push the throttle forward. Airspeed's alive. And VR. Rotate. We want to get to a rate of about 74, as we mentioned. And there's the Daytona 500 in there. No cars going around. <laughs> Game isn't that sophisticated. before we turn left here. There's the Delta. And we are going to turn left here. The ocean out there. Or the speedway, you can see the banked, high bank turns. So, not too long for now, they'll actually be flying all flying, racing in there. So, let's set our heading. Let's, let's put it on autopilot, shall we? Ah, maybe not. And I don't have it climbing fast enough. You can see our speed got away because we're doing too much sightseeing. Actually, we will put it on autopilot just so we can do some other things. Autopilot navigation. And we will climb to 3,000 feet. There we go. Ocean out there. This is the last bit of the speedway. Fifteen degrees where we are. So any, anything below five, you want to put the pitot heat on to stop the uh, airspeed gauge from freezing, so that you know how fast you're going. 
And once we get up there, I'm going to switch over now, but you can see here where we are. And we'll want this chart to put information in. But we'll do that once we get up to speed. Make sure that the heading button is going forward. I always want to do that. Tower here. Foxtrot I'm going to keep the uh, RPMs around 2,500 if I can. Today, check that heading. Reduce the RPMs. So reduce the throttle. Pull back on it a bit. Sometimes it's easier to do it here than it is actually on my throttle. A little finer adjustments here. 3,000 above, we should be leaning. So makes the engine run more efficiently. But we don't have a long time to go, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Just make sure that we keep the 2500 here. Let's pull up that chart. It's first of all, 119.625. We're going to get that in. Probably could have done that. Should have done it before we left. Or 19. 625. That'll be the weather at St. Augustine. While well, we're waiting for that to kick in, 111.1 has to go on VR1. 111. Went the long way. One VR one one eleven one. You can see we're making our turn here towards Kobok. We'll be there in about fifteen minutes. Again, we'll set the heading and let's see. The wind was about zero to zero degrees when I checked before we left the uh, office, the flight office. I think we're fine coming in on 11. Let's, let's set nav one so we actually hear it when it kicks in. Actually see in here too, it'll light up with uh, IGUF, India Gulf Uniform Hotel. So not much to do now. We will be heading out. Let's see. Heading out over the ocean to turn back left. Let me just pull that throttle back just a little bit again. I'm sure, there's lots of people down on that beach today. This will be 95, I-95, Interstate 95. Let's just pull out this again. 
this being the sectional chart. Wait for that to load. So we're coming up here, you can see that's 95. And we're heading out this way. So there should be a plant that we can see up there. Later on, we'll go past the Flagler Exec Airport. Oh, not enough bandwidth today. All that means is that the voices sound more computer generated. Let's turn off our lights, landing lights, taxi lights. Don't need those on. Mangrove swamps in here. For the amount of prep that you have to do with all the uh, everything beforehand, flight, uh, flight planning, the weather and that, getting all that information, it uh, probably is just as fast to drive to these destinations, but certainly not as much fun. Beautiful day here today, though. Central Florida. Just some clouds on the horizon. Strange patterns here. We'll just snap a picture here. Let's get a picture of this. Get a picture that way. That's the nice thing about flight sim. You can't get the pictures outside in real life. Start taking some pictures for Wings Friday. Post them on Twitter. It can be very difficult to tell sometimes whether you're actually looking at reality or simulation. I mean, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is just incredible for the amount of uh, our or the reality that you actually see here. See the homes. We have mentioned it before, one of the most people when they start flying in uh, MF, uh, MSFS 2020 for the first time, the first thing they do is find their home. And certainly it's the first thing I did. Where do I live? See what it looks like. Things here are just under 10 minutes to go to get to Kobach. We're 19.6, 19.5 nautical miles from it. Heading is 7 degrees. So you see here is the actual route. But we're heading 13 degrees, and that's because we've got wind. coming in from 099 at 13 knots. So over here at 13 knots, it's pushing us a little bit. So we have to fly 13 degrees to actually make it seven degrees. I don't have to do any of that calculation. The uh, flight management computer does it all for me. So let's see if we can get uh, there we go. Weather.
Okay, so we got a bit of a change here. So the first thing we're going to do is pull up these charts for St. Augustine. Uh, approach 1-3 RNAV. There we go. So we want to get in Mateo. So let's do that. That's, I'm not sure I've done a procedure uh, here yet. So procedure. Enter approach. Uh, no, we want uh, one three. R now one three, but I'm not sure which one it is. It's got to be this one, LPV. So let's enter that. Come down here, Mateo, which is here. Enter. And we come down here and we actually want to activate it. So we're heading to Mateo. Let's see. And if we come up here and open the range here, come in this way and bang. So change of plan, but always happy to accommodate and do things like that. Uh, so just to prepare. the heading button so we're heading that way three 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 zero three three was the barometer that we were given so I'm going to do that and 2000 is where we need to be you can see here on the chart 2000 Matteo Tefro Tunju and from Tunju we start descending no ILS to help us today. It's fun. It makes these um, RNAV procedures fun. So I'm going to actually, well, I'll leave it in just in case. Uh, let's descend now to 2000. So let's set the altimeter there at 2000 and vertical speed we want to go down at about let's go down at 500 feet per minute down lower and we can have a look at some of these buildings I'm going to pull back the throttle don't want to over speed here all these mangroves over here. Ah, here's a golf course. Not sure if this is a resort. Certainly looks like it. Always do enjoy a change of plan. And sometimes it does get very busy. When you're on VATSIM, which is the virtual air traffic network, you certainly do get more of a warning that you're coming in on runway 13 instead of uh, 31 where we were going to come in. It gives you a little bit more of a chance to plan, make changes as required. So what are we doing now? I want to have a look at the airport, see where we could park the terminal here. Control tower, customs we don't need. That beeping is the nav one coming on. But we're not going to use that because we're not going into that runway anymore. There's the FBO here, flight office. So we'll try and come in and we will park over here. Shut it down, head off for our burger. So let's get uh, 13 here. We will eventually show up on this app. So we're almost there. Let's get uh, 
2000. Let's get our RPM back up to 2500. And there's Mateo there. This should be Highway 95. Is that a... Looks like a tower right there. Right there. I wonder if we can see that. Oh, tough to tell. Be way up here somewhere. Could be these towers here. Could be this one. Tough to tell. It's where the... Uh, that should give us a clue. The bend in the road. So, right here. It's this tower here. A couple of towers. So there's the bend in the road. So we're coming across this way. A few cars down there today. Maybe some of them are actually heading down to the Daytona 500. We're over here on 2500. Let's go to our fuel. It's great. Mean. Well, that's good. I mean, it's fine there. Systems, fuel flow, gallons used, gallons remaining. Everything looks great. I actually just used a Have to see about getting a higher bandwidth so we don't have the problem with the voices when I'm not on that sim. But here we are here. Eight Foxtrot Lima Zero. Let's see if we can oh it's probably this private airport here. So it won't have a uh, number. Here's the one which equates to here, and then this one will be this airport here. Oh, nothing but mangroves down here. Again, there's 95. All the way up to Maine. From Miami up to Maine, actually right up to the Canadian border. I was starting to say, and then had to listen to ATC, certainly did use an abbreviated checklist today to get off the ground. Left out a number of steps, which really, it doesn't affect the plane whatsoever. Um, in flights in, certainly in the real world, wouldn't do that. I make sure everything is running within parameters. But I didn't do that today, just so that we could uh, get up faster. Right here, that's St. John's River. We saw that on the chart. Let's go back here. There it is there, the St. John's River. <clears throat> 
So let's have a look. We'll come up here, turn right 2000. Once we make our turn, we've got to come down to 1600. So I won't adjust the uh, altitude yet until we get closer. We won't be to the tail until one minute, not even 38 seconds from now. Got a right hand turn up to this direction, up here. So because we're coming in, there's an airport here. That would be Flagler, I think. Maybe. No, maybe it's that one. It is this one here. Palatka Municipal. They do some skydiving there. So now we're heading up this way, and we'll turn right and come back in. So again, we'll fix the heading. Now because we had to go to the far side of the airport, the north side of the airport, northwest side of the airport, it certainly did add some time to the flight. See here, here's the airport. We would have been up here and then coming in by now at 35 minutes. So we're almost landing. We'll have uh, maybe another 10, 15 minutes added to the flight because of having to go to the northwest of the airport. Probably could have come in. Well, I know I could have come in on runway 3-1 as we originally planned. Um, be a bit of a tailwind, but it wouldn't be significant for this Cessna. But we were given one three, so that's what we'll do. And I don't think I've had a, an opportunity to actually do some changes to flight plans and landing runways on a video for you yet, so we go with it. And let's just see what we've got way out there. Let's see, smokestack. Oh, <laughs> we've got over here. Looks like a smokestack here. I wonder if that is, I wonder if there's a plant over there. Just have a look. It doesn't say, but these would be it here. Could be a nuclear plant out there. Quite often see that with the smokestack here. This is the right here. That airport so directly over it to here. It doesn't say what it is on this chart. But I've seen nuclear plants that look like that. But I have seen just regular chimneys that produce that kind of smoke or steam. So the airport is probably in here. You can see, just I don't see any indications yet, any markers. Although that could be the area of water, the intercoastal. See how big it is here that we're seeing here. So once we get up here to Euphoro, or Euphoro, not sure how they pronounce it. It's the thing with these intersections. Uh, some of them are phonetic. Some of them are, you know, don't know how to pronounce them. Then we'll set the uh, our altitude to sixteen hundred. So we're there when we get to Tenju. Or at ten, sorry, I'll rephrase that. We will set our altimeter to sixteen hundred. So when we pass Tenju. We can start descending at 500 feet per minute. And that'll keep us on our course. And we'll go down to 1600. And when we pass, we should get there about here, about two miles before, mile and a half before 
Yuduzu, or Yuduzo. Then we'll start descending at 500 feet per minute. It should take us right to the runway. We'll show up in here shortly. Always great sightseeing in different parts of the world. St. Augustine has the distinction, I believe, of being the oldest city in the U.S., which then makes it the oldest city in North America. And I believe, legend has it, Ponce de Leon found the Fountain of Youth or at least was searching for the Fountain of Youth in St. Augustine. Nice little area. Nice little city. There is a fort there that you can tour. An old, old fort. And the fort is right on the water. Cannons the whole bit. Kind of neat. Kind of curious if this would be fresh water, salt water, or brackish, combination of the two. I don't know, that's for sure. And a minute and a half we'll be turning. Let's see if we're on that chart yet. And there we are. Some docks down here. What's these people? Obviously, they boat on St. John River here, but they would also be able to get out to the ocean. Looks like a farm of some kind here. I don't know what, though. It's certainly not a s solar farm. No solar panels. So, don't know what that would be. So I'm going to set our altimeter down to 1600. There we go. <clears throat> and after we make our turn, we'll descend to the 1600. In 30 seconds, we'll be making our turn. Not a lot of pools in this area. I tell you, if I lived in Florida, I'd be having a pool. More docks and we're making our turn so let's see what's over here Make sure we're not going into anybody okay uh, vertical speed we'll get down at 500 feet per minute pull this back so let's prepare for our lights on Mixture in. Great. We are fine. And bring this map in a little tighter. Hmm. Just want to check the airport again. Our options. Maybe B2 we can get off. I don't see that we have to go down to B4. This, this seaplane ramp is great to use. Obviously, when you have an amphibious plane, I'll have to do that for you one day in here. Then we'll do a sightseeing tour. Leaves St. Augustine uses the ramp. Come out here, take off. Do some sightseeing, come back, and up the ramp. So let's say B2. Do it here. Another tower. Let's 
So if we look over here. These towers in here, right there. Business is down there. So we're making our turn. Actually, I came down to 1600 too, too early. I should have started to come down here, but I did it. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. I got in touch with the tower. That's a no nearest airport. Northeast. Request full stop. Yes, see, they've changed it on us. Should have, I'm not going around. Should have just come in as we normally do and as we want it to originally. However, that's fine. We'll be to the airport soon. So I'm going to set the altimeter here. Sorry, the altitude. So we start descending down to 300 feet after we pass Yaduzu. Won't make that mistake again. Now I believe the town. We got a second to look here. Yes, it's all south of. That's what I thought. South of the airport. Should be the airport right here. So the landing lights on. on. Fuel is checked. Really should have gone with the full checklist however So here, indication of where the glide slope is it's above us. That's good. This line is in the magenta line here. It's not broken, left or right, so we're on our LNAV. Fine. We're right on the glide path here. I'm pull the speed back a bit. This is the airport here. This is the runway we'll be landing on. After we pass the two zoo, I'll start descending. See here, we've got our magenta alerts. There we go. Four miles. Let's start descending vertical speed. Give it 10 degrees of flaps. It's going down. The flaps are, and we can actually see they've gone down a bit. We'll do 20 before we get in closer. It's the airport. We will be coming in here and heading to the right. 
hopefully, um, was it Bravo? Bravo 2. Well, let's take it off autopilot. <clears throat> let's fly it in ourselves. We're a little high. You can see the magenta dot here. Should go down a bit. But better to be a little high than a little low. A little low, you run into things. Trees, buildings. Before the end of the runway. Always not good. I'd rather be slightly high. And I'm looking at this, this dot. For my altitude, this line, I have to go a little bit left, and those lights should be red and white. So I've got to head back to the left a little bit, being pushed over from the wind that's coming from our left. You can see here, eight knots, not a lot, but enough to push us. But we'll be fine. Okay. Flaps 20. Did we get the clear to land? We're going to land anyway, but no, because it asked us to make left traffic, right? So, so a little high, but that's okay. That 500 was 500 feet above ground level. That's the call out. I want to slow down a bit. And it's been a while since I made a video. So I'm glad I've been able to get back in and, and make one, even though it was abbreviated checklist, not everything done to the leather, but fun. 95, I-95, coming in here, slow down a bit more. <laughs> no, you're right, I wasn't, because I didn't come in your way, changing your mind again. I think we went too far, so we do have to go a little bit uh, right here. I uh, turn right here, flaps up. I'm going to go back here to the, to the right along this runway. Since so I've already been a bad boy. We're going to go down here. Look in the chart here. We're going to go down into here. And then this way. It's much better on Vatsim, to be honest with you. You're landing where you should be. So I've done it before where I've actually gone around, planned to go in, in this example, runway three run. They changed it to one three, so that's what we did. And then got the three one again as we're coming in, changed it to one three. So you just keep on going around. Anybody off to our right? No. Nope. Going this way, these lights are often misplaced. So, come down here, landing light off, taxi on, strobe off. Come down to the FBO, Flight Business Office, I believe it stands for. aren't rendered better. 
maybe I could have got a Uh, scenery for it, but someone come in here, do a bit of a Yui, and you turn, right rudder, and a little bit of brake, throttle off, there we go, and brake. And we'll put the RPM up to a thousand. Turn the taxi light off, nav light can come off, mixture off, that'll kill the engine. That is good. That's what we like to see. Turn off the avionics. Turn off the magnetos, alternator and battery, and the standby battery. And there we are. We're now in St. Augustine for our hundred dollar hamburger. Nice light, just over just under an hour. See, I turned that off. Uh, just under an hour. So we'll park it here, go into the FBO, make sure that we're over here, pay the fees, grab a cab down to St. Augustine, do some sightseeing, and in another flight we will head back to Daytona. So thanks for joining me today. It's been a pleasure, short flight, but uh, awfully fun. And as always, may everything you do in life, may you always get three green, blue skies, and the wind at your back. Take care for now.